Hey everyone, Josh here. We're back at the Silver Vita and Toreg here. So we got the turbos working, we've got some music now with the radio. So now we're doing the battery drain. So that's a fairly common issue on these early Toregs. Uh, Kessie is a usual culprit. So we're gonna do a quick walk around, see what Kessie door handles and everything work. And then uh, go through some diagnos diagnostics for obviously a battery drain. So let's get into her. So with the Cassie, with the key in your pocket, that's locked. You should be able to grab the door and it unlocks. So we'll go to this back one. So that locks it. That doesn't unlock it. So I think we got a bad door sensor on the back on the driver's side here. Let's go around. Okay, so that button doesn't work. That, I don't know if he caught that, but when I came over here right away, that unlocked it. So we're gonna say that door sensor is good, that button's bad. There's nothing there either. So we're gonna say we got two bad door sensors on the back. So now we'll check uh, battery drain. So for this part, you need access to your front battery. Now the seat can get folded up pretty easy. Just two bolts there and there. Obviously the trim around, you have to take off as well. It is a triple square, so if you work on Volkswagen, you should have a set of triple squares already, but this is a 10 mil. So we got the battery. This one has a disconnect in there, so it's gonna make life for this one nice and easy to diagnose. We'll go over that here shortly. You're gonna want a multimeter that has a 10 amp setting. And then basically, we gotta go around and trip all the door sensors. So as you can see, it knows these doors are open and that's gonna be a drain on the batteries itself. So, there. So now that door's shut. I want to shut this one here too. So you basically kind of get right into the the U or the V, whatever you want to call it in there. Get it clicked the first one and then just pry it up the rest of the way. We'll go to this one. That's off. I don't care about this passenger door. I should make sure it's shut though. And then the hood. I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be open, but I'm gonna leave it open. So any of these scent or latches that you flip, make sure you unlatch them before you shut it. It's obviously just not very good for the hinges to be slammed on a closed hinge. So next up, we're gonna get into the, how to set up this multimeter. So hopefully if you're watching this, you have a basic knowledge on uh, battery drains and how to parasitic draws and how to diagnose them. If not, we'll just do a quick overview. So multimeter, that's gonna be volt settings. So you can check your battery voltage, make sure everything's charged it up nice. So then you're gonna switch it over to amperage setting. Take it out of this one and put it into your 10 amp fused on here. So with it in this setting here, it doesn't matter what you have this dial set at, when you have it set to here, if you go to check battery voltage, you are gonna blow the fuse and they're $10 a fuse or so, so it kind of sucks, especially when you've uh, blown two of them and you're on your third one. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, I seem to have a bad habit. As soon as I get a new fuse in, I wanna check battery power again. And uh, for whatever reason, I've blown a couple here now. So, we've got this disconnect in here, 
which makes life easy for testing parasitic draw. So you don't ever want to interrupt the battery connection. If you do, all the bad or all of your controllers are gonna get no power. They're gonna basically shut right down. And as soon as you connect your multimeter in there, you're gonna a great big spike as all the controllers come back online and then they have to go back into wake or uh, sleep mode. So it takes a bit of time, 15, 20 minutes, some work sometimes up to close to an hour. So we're gonna go over what happens here because I think I kinda already know the issue. So if you don't want it, if you don't wanna put everything to sleep or disconnect the battery, the best way would be um, if you've got probes with clamps, if you can clamp the one probe to a different ground that this one isn't on, and then set your other clamp either on this connection itself or on the battery here, and then that way you can disconnect this. So then your multimeter is the only thing in line and it's basically replacing your ground strap. So on this one, it's a 10 amp fused circuit so you don't want to go over 10 amps so lights are usually okay the seat can move ahead and back stuff like that but if you get into anything more than that you risk blowing your expensive multimeter fuse so since i can cheat here a bit gotta get that set to dc just gonna kind of set that in there This one. That's not too bad there. And then disconnect that. So we still have some stuff online because well, all the uh, doors have just been opened. So we gotta wait for that to drop down a bit. Uh, just to show as an example, if I I'll leave that one there. If I take this one out, so that's simulating if you just unhook the battery without having the, your multimeter set up. And then if I go like that, so now you're four and a half amp draw. And the other issue is, I've got some of the stuff apart for other issues. Um, all your lights come on now. So you have to go around and Trip your doors again. I think that should. Oh. Yeah, that one's still on. That one's on too. Let's give it a minute that should all time out so here we're at we're at 450 milliamps or 0.44 amps so really what you're looking for is i think volkswagen spec is 50 milliamps so that'd be 0 0.05 amps um i don't think we're gonna get it that low but definitely lower than half an amp would be nice so for the first 15 minutes or so, you're going to hear clicking coming from your BCM up there. And I'll splice in a video here. I've done a little bit of diagnostics on here so far. But so that'll basically, that'll click and it'll spike two and a half amps and then it'll click again and it'll drop back down. So I think that's normal operation after about that 15 minute mark. I basically filmed this for an hour and watched it because for some reason this would time out it's a fairly new multimeter to me and i don't know how to set up the uh min max and average so yeah i filmed it for an hour and it didn't spike after that 15 minutes so that's just something to think about you know make sure that it's fully asleep so what we're going to do now is unplug the kessie handles in the back doors because 
they don't get used very often. So you got two screws across the bottom and a bunch of push pins. So this one I've already popped. And then down near the bottom here is a, you'll see a purple plug. You can just unplug it. I'll maybe get something wedged in there and grab a light so you can see. So there's that purple plug. So, without taking the whole door panel off, you got small hands like myself. Might need both hands in there. There we go. So it's just a the locking tab on the bottom, the non-purple part. You just push down and then pull it out. There, that dropped the 0.12 milliamp. I'm gonna do this other door here yet as well. And put the door panels back on. Yeah, same kind of deal. Um, yeah, I don't really need to film this part. So both sides apart, we're going or jumping around kind of from 90 milliamps to 120 milliamps. So if that doesn't solve your issue, this is a good time to mention uh, you should have probably scanned the car before we started this. Uh, I had a pile of codes, but a lot of it had to do with the dead battery. So reset or cleared the codes, checked again, and nothing really came up. I imagine these door handles probably would have eventually, but nothing right off the bat came up. So if that didn't fix your issue, the next possibility Kessie related is the actual Kessie module. So that's just kind of up there beside your BCM. So you've got that ECU looking connector and just a normal Volkswagen connector and that can come off. It's got MOSFETs in there that can leak. Uh, sorry, not leak, but they can cause a parasitic draw voltage. And they've also got fusible resistors in there that can cause issues. So I'd unplugged that earlier and that didn't change my draw. And I'm not seeing the spike that I was seeing before either. So I think we're good here now. If your issue is still, still have a high draw, uh, the next thing you can do is obviously look for anything aftermarket, any trackers. You obviously don't need to disassemble stuff as much as I did here. I'm diagnosing something else here yet too. But aftermarket devices are the very next issue that I'd look at, like radio, you got a CB radar detector, stuff like that. And then the very next thing to do would be basically the old school way of pulling fuses and uh, seeing what causes the drop. So you've got a fuse panel here. You've got one same spot on the passenger side. I don't want to open the door now because <laughs> I still got that hooked up. You've also got one just up here in the engine bay. So basically pull fuses and see what causes the voltage to drop or the amperage to drop. Uh, one word of advice would be take a picture of this, where your fuses are, what size they are, stuff like that. It's pretty easy to get them mixed up or they go in wrong fuses and wrong spots and uh, just be a nightmare after the fact. So I think without um, setting the min max up on this, I think I'm going to basically let it sit for a couple days. It's basically setting the alarm off after about a day or two from a dead battery. So hopefully the alarm doesn't go off, but yeah, we'll basically come back in a couple days and see what battery voltage is sitting at. So hopefully this helped you and uh, yeah, I should have a couple more videos. We're doing a cluster repair and cluster diagnostics while I'm doing the drain here as well. So yeah, so those videos should be out shortly after this one. So yeah, thanks for watching.